The Genius Society is made up of some of the most brilliant minds found in the Star Real universe. To say that its members are years ahead of their peers is a huge understatement. Those who are invited to join the Genius Society have to be approved and invited by the Eon of Erudition itself, Noose. So those who call themselves members are essentially the best of the best of the best. Exactly, are we here? Sean? Second Lieutenant Jake Jensen, West Point, graduate with honors. We're here because you're looking for the best of the best of the best, sir. Despite the universe being made up of billions if not trillions of sentient beings, there have only ever been about 84 members. One of these members is Madame Herta, the owner of the Herta space station, an avid curio hoarder, and one of the most brilliant minds at the time of the main story. In this video, we're going to talk about Herta's lore, her personality, as well as why she is so interested in the simulated universe project. Before we dive into that, if you want to see more Honkai Star Rail content, do consider subscribing to the channel. At the current point in the story, not much is known about Madame Herta's past, but in an article on the Genius Society, Herta has been stated to be contributing to the field of science from a very young age. She has solved problems no one thought possible, created tools that were far more advanced than what the universe had at the time, and all this before she reached middle age. When she did reach middle age, she published a paper on reversing aging itself, and by the time she was old, was capable of putting this research to practical use, and is said to now be in a far more youthful state. We don't really know how old she really is by the time the main character meets her, but it's implied that she has gone beyond the typical lifespan of a human due to this reverse aging process. It is because of her numerous and ever-growing contributions that she was later invited to join the Genius Society as its 83rd member. While she has provided the universe with innumerable benefits courtesy of her genius, Kurta's interest in any particular subject is fleeting at best. She only ever does research on things she finds interesting, and once they stop being interesting, she has a habit of just abandoning them. This personality trait or quirk, if you want to call it that, is why she now currently appears through her proxy puppets and why we don't meet her in person. Despite figuring out the answer to reverse aging, time is not something even Herta can go against. And so, she is often seen spreading herself thin through the use of her puppets so that she may pursue whatever she fancies at any particular time and be almost everywhere at once. This quirk is also why the Herta space station even exists, as while the universe views it as a location where great learning and discovery takes place, to Herta, it's just a storage facility. Now while she may appear aloof when it comes to her area of research, there is one particular field that she has been enamored with even when she was just a child. In one of Herta's manuscripts, we see that her fascination with the eons and the paths started from a very early age. She views the eons and the paths as the pinnacle of philosophical and imaginary knowledge, and to unlock their secrets is to understand the universe as a whole, the goal that the eon of erudition itself is pursuing. This curiosity has converged into one of her largest research projects to date, the simulated universe. An individual member of the Genius Society is often said to be so advanced in their knowledge that the most advanced technology today may be something those in the Genius Society have discovered or even used for tens or even hundreds of years in the past. So to have four of them collaborate on one project, I think speaks volumes of how important the simulated universe really is. As I mentioned, Herta's goal is nothing short of a full understanding of the eons and their paths, and the simulated universe is a digital replica of the real one, complete with eons as well. Most eons tend to ignore sentient beings in the universe and are often fixated with the path that they are on. With the simulated universe, Herta aims to speak directly to these gods, albeit a digital approximation of them, to learn their origins and secrets. Now on the surface, this may seem like intellectual curiosity, but I can't help but wonder if there is some underlying or grander reason for her interest in this particular area. Perhaps understanding how the universe works, the eons and their paths is really just a means to an end. If Herta could somehow simulate a universe in which eons reveal their true nature and even respond to her, she could likely source any and all possible technological development and knowledge from such a tool. 
There's a saying in academia that everything there is to learn already exists and we are just rediscovering it. I think this is what the collaborators of the simulated universe is trying to circumvent. The process of discovering unknown knowledge which is painstaking and time consuming. Think of the simulated universe as a search engine with accurately simulated gods answering every question you had. The days of intellectually grasping at straws would largely be a thing of the past and the answers to any question of the universe becomes easily accessible. Even Nus itself was once a computer designed to provide answers to the universe. Maybe Hertha wishes to jump ahead of this and circumvent Nus altogether. Why rely on one god when you can get the answer from a whole pantheon of them? But this is just a crazy theory I have in my head and the simpler answer could be that she's just looking to understand the eons and their paths and nothing more. Now before I end this video, there is one other thing that I would like to bring up regarding Hertha that quite a few people have asked. Is Hertha an emanator? If we trust in what Silver Wolf and Kafka says at the very beginning of the story, then the answer is simply yes. Some of you might have missed this as you need to inspect Hertha's portrait in order to trigger a conversation where Silver Wolf refers to her as an emanator of news. But is this an indication that all Genius Society members are emanators as well? Well, this is where it gets a little bit unclear. Nus itself is a pretty KG eon, and it is said that the answer to the universe is beyond the limits of mortal understanding and wisdom. So we don't know how it actually views the geniuses it has granted memberships to. On top of that, the only pursuit Nus is even interested in is figuring out the truth of the universe. As you know, emanators are those who receive blessings and a portion of the eon's powers, but if you think about it, Nus, with full access to the path of erudition and the capability of processing trillions of variables simultaneously, still isn't able to figure out the universe. So it seems odd that it would grant portions of its powers to others given it doesn't believe mortal wisdom is sufficient to interpret the universe and all its secrets. That said, it could just very well be indulging these geniuses as sort of a backup plan or as an alternative method or a different angle for solving the mysteries of the universe. In that scenario, it likely would grant others some of its powers to allow them to pursue different angles or directions in solving the great mystery. Think of it as news making smaller mini computers out of these biological geniuses that run parallel to itself and perhaps they could focus on subjects it can't afford time to. Another alternative is that perhaps Nus indulges these geniuses as a way to grow the path of erudition further, giving Nus more processing power and bringing it closer to solving the great question. Now obviously, as we know so little about these characters this early into the game, I could very well be proven wrong in the future. A lot of this is just guesses and conjecture based on information we have, so just be aware things may change and nothing is currently set in stone. Hertha is a very interesting character who may be at the center of things to come in the future, but so much about her remains a mystery still. I hope she isn't just relegated to being the caretaker of the simulated universe, and I hope that her story as well as the story for the simulated universe is expanded further. I'm also super curious to meet her in person and wonder if we would ever get a 5 star version of her in the future, but how that 5 star kid would be better than Kuru Kuru is anyone's guess. Let me know in the comments what you think Hertha's motives are for developing the simulated universe. I'll end the video here and if you enjoyed it, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. As usual, have a nice day.